Hi everyone, this lecture is about the diagnostically significant serum proteins. I'm Dr. Gab Pascual from Legend Review Center. These are the various diagnostically significant proteins that you need to know. Study the biological function of each protein as well as why they are measured in the laboratory. First is prealbumin. Prealbumin is also known as transtyretine. Prealbumin migrates before albumin in the serum protein electrophoresis. It is a transport protein for thyroid hormones. It transports vitamin A by forming a complex with retinol binding protein. Prealbumin can be decreased in hepatic damage, acute phase inflammatory response, as well as in tissue necrosis. A low prealbumin level is a sensitive marker of poor nutritional status. This is the main reason why prealbumin is measured in laboratory. It may be increased in patients receiving steroids, in alcoholism, and in chronic renal failure. The next protein is albumin. Albumin is the serum protein with the highest concentration in serum. It has various functions, like it provides nearly 80% of your colloid osmotic pressure, this is the reason why in hypoalbuminemia, patients tend to develop edema. It also buffers pH, and it binds to various substances in blood, such as hormones, drugs, electrolytes, and unconjugated bilirubin. Albumin is a negative acute phase reactant, meaning in inflammatory states, albumin levels actually decrease instead of increasing. It may be decreased in liver disease, malnutrition, malabsorption, kidney loss, and hemodilution, and it may, it may be increased in dehydration. The next protein is alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin inhibits serine proteases like neutrophil elastase. Now, it is important uh, to measure alpha-1 antitrypsin in some congenital uh, conditions. Now, for example, in the gene mutation uh, in serpino 1 gene mutation serpino 1 gene mutation can cause aat deficiency or abnormal forms of aat which then leads to uncontrolled activity of neutrophil elastase remember aat inhibits neutrophil elastase so with the deficiency of aat neutrophil elastase becomes uncontrolled now what happens is due to the uncontrolled activity of neutrophil elastase alveoli could be destroyed due to the destruction of elastin found in the alveoli. And eventually, this leads to the condition which we know as emphysema. Abnormal forms of AAT can also accumulate in the liver and cause cirrhosis. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is the major component of the alpha-1 globulin band in serum protein electrophoresis. So in the deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin, you will see a lack of an alpha-1 globulin band on SPE. This is emphysema. Emphysema is one of the COPDs or chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. The most common cause is still smoking, although there are congenital forms like AAT deficiency. Pathophysiology is due to excessive inflammation or lack of AAT, which then leads to destruction of alveolar air sacs. This then leads to loss of elastic recoil and collapse of airways during exhalation, leading now to obstruction and air trapping. So emphysema usually manifests with dyspnea or difficulty in breathing and cough with minimal sputum. Patients with emphysema are described to be pink puffers because when they exhale, they tend to exhale slowly through their mouth as if they are puffing. They also develop the characteristic barrel chest and also they, are, uh, they manifest with hypoxemia or low oxygen levels. So this picture... Uh, compares the two forms of COPD, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Patients with chronic bronchitis, on the other hand, are described to be blue bloaters. Again, patients with emphysema are described to be pink puffers. The next protein is alpha and fetoprotein. It is synthesized by the developing embryo and fetus, and it is thought to protect the fetus from immunologic attack by the mother. In adults, however, it has no known function. Alpha-1 fetoprotein can be measured to screen for neural tube defects like spina bifida and it may be elevated also in the presence of twins. Low AFP on the other hand is seen 
uh, in cases of Down syndrome or trisomy 21. In adults, alpha and fetoprotein is a tumor marker for hepatocellular carcinoma or some testicular carcinomas. The next protein would be ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is a copper-containing protein. It actually contains more than 90% of the total serum copper, and it is used in the diagnosis of Wilson's disease. So this is Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease is an autosomal recessive condition uh, wherein you have defective copper transport. And, you, and this manifests with decreased levels of ceruloplasmin and excess storage of copper in various organs. Now the problem is, when copper deposits in various organs, it may cause uh, detrimental effects to these organs. Like for example, in the liver, it can cause hepatic cirrhosis. In the brain, it can cause neurologic damage. And when it accumulates in the cornea, it could uh, be seen as your Kaiser Fleischer rings. Other laboratory findings include a decrease in the total serum copper, but an increase in free serum copper and an increase in urinary copper. The next serum protein that we need to discuss is alpha-2 macroglobulin. So from the name itself, we know that alpha-2 macroglobulin is a large protein and it functions to inhibit proteases such as trypsin, thrombin, calicrine, and plasmin. We measure alpha-2 macroglobulin in diagnosing nephrotic syndrome. It is increased relatively in nephrotic syndrome. Now, what is nephrotic syndrome? Nephrotic syndrome is usually a manifestation of glomerular disorders characterized by proteinuria of more than 3.5 grams per day or what we call your nephrotic range proteinuria. The pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome is disrup uh, disruption of the electrical charges that produce the tightly fitting podocyte barrier uh, in the glomerulus resulting in massive loss of protein and lipids. Remember, the glomerulus serves to filter substances passing, uh, passing into the urine. Now, once the podocytes in the glomerulus are disrupted, this filter in the glomerulus will now allow substances which do not normally pass in the glomerulus uh, to be excreted in the urine. So for example, albumin, which is not normally excreted in the urine, will then be able to pass through the glomerulus and this will now cause the albumin levels of the patient in the blood to decrease and the protein levels in the urine to increase. So again, nephrotic syndrome is due to disruption of the podocyte barrier. Manifestations include hypoalbuminemia, again due to the loss of albumin from the blood into the urine and this usually manifests with pitting edema. Gamma globulins or immunoglobulins are lost also. So you have hypo, uh, gamma, hypo gamma globulinemia, which eventually increases your risk for infection. You also develop a hypercoagulable state due to the loss of antithrombin 3. And there's also hyperlipidemia and hypercholesterolemia due to the increased production of lipids by the liver when hypoalbuminemia uh, happens. So this may result in the presence of fatty casts in the urine. The next protein is haptoglobin. Haptoglobin binds free hemoglobin to prevent the loss of hemoglobin and its constituent iron into the urine. It is used primarily to help detect and evaluate hemolytic anemia. So uh, in cases of hemolytic anemia or any condition wherein there is a hemolytic process, hemoglobin which is normally found inside the RBCs is lost and it is now called free hemoglobin. Now, the problem with free hemoglobin is that being a small protein, it can actually be uh, excreted in the urine and it can actually cause nephrotoxicity. So, we need to prevent free hemoglobin from being lost in the urine. This is the function of haptoglobin. Free hemoglobin binds to haptoglobin. And free hemoglobin and haptoglobin form a complex. This haptoglobin-hemoglobin complex is removed by reticular endothelial cells, mainly in the spleen. So in cases of hemolytic anemia, haptoglobin levels are actually decreased. The next protein would be transferrin. Transferrin transports two molecules of ferric iron. 
It is a negative acid phase reactant, meaning in inflammatory states, transferrin levels decrease. It is a major component of the beta-globulin fraction, and it is tested to determine the cause of anemia. Such as in IDA, there are increased levels of transferrin. Another protein is hemopexin. Hemopexin scavenges heme released or lost by the turnover of heme proteins such as hemoglobin, and it protects the body from the oxidative damage that free heme can cause. Low hemopexin levels are diagnostic of hemolytic anemia. So there are now two proteins that you need to remember, which serves as, uh, serve as markers for hemolytic anemia. This would be haptoglobin and hemopexin. Both are decreased in hemolytic anemia. The next protein is C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein precipitates with C-substance, which is a polysaccharide of pneumococci, thus the name C-reactive protein. It functions in opsonization, or it enhances the process of phagocytosis, and it is one of the first acid phase proteins to rise in inflammatory disease. Higher increasing amounts of CRP suggest an acute infection or inflammation. This is actually the main reason why we measure C-reactive protein. We measure CRP as an excellent marker of inflammation. It is actually increased by 1,000 times in inflammatory states. Now, those are the uh, diagnostically significant proteins that you need to remember. There are still a lot of uh, diagnostically significant proteins, but the ones that we have discussed here are the ones which are usually asked in the uh, exams. Now, you also need to know the electrophoretic pattern of each serum protein. You need to know who migrates to the alpha-1 region, to the alpha-2, to the beta, and to the gamma regions. Now, uh, that would be it for this lecture. If you find this lecture helpful, uh, like this video or leave a comment below and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.